world. Welcome back to another Pico Gym workout challenge write-up video. In this video, we'll be walking through the cryptography challenge easy peasy. Let's get into it. A one-time pad is unbreakable, but can you manage to recover the flag? Wrap with Pico CTF. Okay, so it's gonna be non-standard. So whatever we get, we need to wrap it in the flag form. So they give us a little portal to connect to and a little OTP file that we probably need to look at in reverse potentially. So let's go ahead and connect to that and see what it gives us. This is the encrypted flag. What data would you like to encrypt? Okay, so whatever we put in, it tries to encrypt it. Seems simple enough on that front. Let's go ahead and take a look at the source code. So here we have a key file and it's just called key. Key length is 50,000, okay. Flag file, flag. All right, let's go to where the main execution is. So we start with startup and then we enter a while loop while C is greater than or equal to zero, then it will encrypt C. So if we look at startup, it reads in the flag file, it reads in the key file, then it says start equals key location and key location we saw is zero to start with. So it's beginning at the beginning of the key, the first character of the key, the 50,000 character key anyways, and then it's going to stop, which is going to be the length of the flag. Well, the flag is in hex, so that means whatever this is, divided by two is going to be our length. So 32, right, because every two digits in hex represents one byte. So our flag length is going to be 32. All right, so now we know the length of the flag. Good thing to keep in mind for later. And here's where the encryption is happening. It looks like it's exoring the key with the coordinate of the flag. So whatever character it's on in the flag, it's going to XOR with the key and then convert that to hex, which is what's producing that output that we saw in hexadecimal. Now we move into the part where we do the actual encryption loop and it's going to ask, well, okay, what data would you like to encrypt? And then it's basically saying if length of our user input, I imagine is greater than length and return negative one start is key location. Okay. So it's picking up where it left off. So every time this runs, it's going to be printing out the encrypted flag after reading in the key and everything. So 32 bytes into the file. So 50,000 minus 32. And you'll see why that's important here in a second. All right, so key file open. So if stop is greater than or equal to 50,000, it's gonna say stop equals stop mod key length. So if key length is 50,000 and stop is 50,000, a number modded by itself is always zero. So it's going to reset the key or, or the key iterator. Interesting. Okay. So those are going to be 50,000 random characters, I imagine. So if we can figure out what the key for the flag was, we can essentially put our own input in and XOR our own input. Well, not XOR it, but feed our own input into the program and XOR that input with the encrypted input that comes back out to get the key. And we can easily do that by essentially having the program on the server side reset the key and then put our input in to get the key that it was used to XOR with the flag. I hope that made sense. It should in a second if it didn't. So let's open up Kali and we'll bring this back over here just so we can have it for reference. And we're going to say Python tag C print A times 49968. And the reason why we're doing 49968 is because that's 50,000 minus 32. Because when the program runs, it's already used up the first part of the key, right? The first 32 characters of the key to XOR with the flag. So the iterator is starting where it left off at, which would be at whatever, uh, 33 essentially, right? Or 32 index wise. That being said, if we just put in the rest of the key, so if we just fill up the buffer, if you wanna call it that with 49,968 A's, then essentially we'll have reset the key. 
And then what we can do is just do a print A times 32. And then the output of that should be our input XORed with the same key that was XORed with the plain text flag. All right, let's see what happens. All right, so here you can see where our first 49,968 A's were encrypted. And then this value right here should be our input XORed with the same key that the flag is XORed with. All right, so now all we need to do is some basic XOR operations to essentially get the plain text flag. So let's make a little solve.py script and we're going to do slash user slash bin slash Python. And then we're going to say from pwn import star because it's got a really nice XOR function in it. And then what I want to do is actually rerun the netcat portal so I can grab the flag. So we'll call that encrypted underscore flag equals bytes dot from hex and then we'll put the string in there and then we want to do our encrypted text I guess yeah we'll do that equals bytes dot from hex we'll just call it encrypted text that's going to be our a's essentially but encrypted and then we're going to need our original a input so we'll just say decrypted underscore text, which is going to be our A's. So that's times 32. All right. Now, what do we do? Well, we know that the key is going to be equal to our encrypted text. Exhort with, oh, and I meant to use the own XOR tool here. Encrypted text, exhort with the decrypted text, right? because remember XOR is transitive. So the decrypted text XORed with the key is going to get the encrypted text. The encrypted text XORed with the key is going to get the decrypted text. And so the encrypted text XORed with the decrypted text is going to give us the key. So XOR is transitive, like I said. And then all we have to do is literally just print out XOR encrypted flag with key and then we'll go ahead and run a dot decode on that so we can get the string value of it rather than bytes and that should be it so let's try running it permission denied oh forgot to add the execution bit to it there we go and that should be our answer and we can easily check this by rerunning our little exploit from earlier and instead of doing the A's here, we're going to simply just put in what should be our flag. And if this matches this, then we know that we got it right. And it looks like it does. So yeah, that value that we got should be our flag if we wrap it in the flag format, of course. So let's take that. Let's do Pico CTF and put our value in there and submit. Okay, that was a pretty cool challenge. So if you enjoyed the video, drop a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. Turn on post notifications to get regular injections of cyber content directly into your feed. Check out our Patreon, join our Discord, and follow us on Twitter. Links in the description box down below. And leave any feedback or questions in the comments section down below. This is Almond Milk. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.